we are exploring the uber important German city of Frankfurt and we're going to talk about what it's like moving, living and working here. I'm Josh and I'm Kaylee with Expats Everywhere, the channel that brings you information and experiences from expats all over the world. So we're in Frankfurt, why is it called Manhattan? Let's take a look at what this city has to offer. One of the reasons that this city has the nickname Manhattan is because of all the skyscrapers that we see around the city. Another reason is because it sits on the river Maine. Germany is filled with bigger cities compared to Frankfurt, but living here will definitely give you an urban feel. Like Josh mentioned, you have the various skyscrapers and the river, but you also have more historical districts and you're not too far from the countryside. You might be surprised to learn that Frankfurt has one of the largest airports in all of Europe. And it's because of things like the stock exchange and the fact that it's considered the financial center in Germany. But the city wasn't always built up like this. And actually in the 1950s, the Frankfurt Cathedral was the tallest building in the city at around 96 meters. But a lot has changed since then. Now, if you move here, you can choose to live near the cathedral or some of these skyscrapers, especially if your work is located in one. But what are some other neighborhoods that you should consider? Well, you have options on either side of the river. When moving to Frankfurt, you want to consider your lifestyle and which neighborhood will fit you. So let's break down some of the popular places around here and what there is to do there. If you enjoy history and museums, you might want to live around this neighborhood. It's south of the main and a large neighborhood to consider. This neighborhood will have a different feel to the other side of the river as it's more local and residential as opposed to the high rises and commercialism. There has been a lot of restoration of historical buildings, there are several traditional restaurants to try, and it's well connected by public transportation. If you're looking for something upscale, then check this neighborhood, which also has historical buildings, but it's close to the city's bank towers along with the university campus and gardens. There are a lot of top-notch restaurants here, so even if you don't want to live in this district, it's worth visiting for good food. This is another neighborhood to consider which is going through a slow gentrification and is known for its theaters. It has a more industrial feel, but prices are lower here. This district is becoming more popular though, so of course you might see rising prices because of this. These are just a few neighborhoods to consider. One note we want to make is although the train station is beautiful, we would not advise for you to live right around this area as it's not very nice. However, Frankfurt is a popular area for expats all over to move to. This city is full of expats, with around 30% of the population here being foreign born. And coming from approximately 180 different countries around the world. So we're looking at a diverse group of people here. So that means lots of opportunities for diverse food and to make friends from all over the world. What kinds of things can you do in Frankfurt? Hanging out and exercising along the main river is quite popular, especially when the weather is better than this. You can cycle, jog, or have a picnic. Maybe the winter is not the best time for these activities as the winter months are in the 30s and 40s and you might catch rain. There are times when you'll hit cold waves and it'll even snow, but generally it's a light snow. Obviously, there are days that can get cold or hot, but the average will stay between the 30s and 40s. It's uncommon for it to be foggy and gray. The rest of the year still has some rain, but obviously not as cold of temperatures. The spring will teeter back and forth with temperatures and can be a bit unstable, but once you move into the summer, you can expect average temperatures to be between the 50s and the 60s, with possibly reaching into the 70s. You will catch some hot days too that will get into the 80s, but it's not generally like extreme heat in Frankfurt summers. Then as the summer fades into fall, it will get a little cooler, but it's all quite pleasant. Just watch out for those rainy days as you slip into the winter months. For those of you who don't like hot weather, Frankfurt is a place to consider. Now what else is there to do besides outdoor activities like pop-up flea markets and hanging out around the river? How about sitting at a bar or a cafe? This is Germany, so what should you drink? Beer. Of course, you have other popular drinks, but you can't beat their domestic beer, which you can get for around four euros. If you're not a beer drinker, then you have to try the apple wine. Of course, this is refreshing when it's warm outside, but can also be drunk all year round. You can also drink it steaming hot with cinnamon and it's nice in the winter. It's a cider like no other and common for locals and tourists like to drink. This place is famous for the apple vine, so we are going to try it. It tastes like apple cider vinegar. It's not bad though. This one I can say. Apple schnapps. Which is? Apple schnapps. <laughs> the 
get stronger. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this. Miss Pelchin. So a little bit of apple in there. It's kind of like brandy. Calvados. Let's give it a go. Not too strong, very sweet. A little bit of the alcohol on the, the finish. It's good. There are loads of options for public transportation, from trams to buses to the subway. And there are even night buses, so there is some form of public transportation that runs around the clock. With so many options, having a car really isn't necessary. And actually, Frankfurt is known as one of the worst cities to explore by car because of all the one-way streets and parking being impossible. So you can have a car to leave Frankfurt if you want. But other than that, take the many public transportation options. You can get tickets from the machines at practically every stop, or you can pop into the RMV ticket shop. You'll spend between two to three euros a ride depending on what ticket you're using and where you're going. There are also taxis and Ubers available as well. It's common for Germans to learn English in school, so if you only speak English, you can still get around the city easily. We do always recommend that you try to learn some of the local language when you move to a new place. So try to give German a go. This is great for those of you with kids because there are plenty of international, private, and public schools that will offer your kids a bilingual education. Keep in mind that international schools can cost upward of 10,000 euros a year. All right, let's break down a few of the costs for you as you consider moving to Frankfurt. Housing will, of course, depend on several factors such as size, location, furnishing, and more. But a one-bedroom apartment in the city center will be around 1,000 euros, but probably a little more than that. And as you move out of the main areas, it will drop around to 800 to 900 euros. For something larger, like a three-bedroom apartment in the city center, it will go up to around 2,000 to 3,000 euros and around 1,500 to 2,000 euros if you're not as central. Utilities can run fairly high, so budget at least 250 euros for those. Again, this is just to give you an idea as there are so many factors to consider which will either lower or higher your costs. Like I mentioned before, you can get good beer for around 4 euros. If you want to pop into an inexpensive restaurant, then plan to spend around 10 euros. And a medium scale restaurant for two will be around 60 euros. Now the cost of living might seem high, but the average salaries are quite good, allowing you to enjoy the city. Germany in general has a high quality medical care and health care system. Frankfurt offers public and private. Annual income and preference will depend on what is offered, how much is covered, and what you pay. It's compulsory to be insured in Germany, so the public care is offered. But private is only available for those who are eligible for things like a certain income or job type. One big difference between the two is the speed of care is much better with private insurance. If you're moving with a company, talk to them about your coverage, but overall, Frankfurt offers good hospitals and clinics if you need them. Frankfurt is a financial hub, so anyone in this industry has job opportunities here. The stock exchange is one of the largest in the world. The financial district is full of companies who have headquarters and branches here, so if you're looking for work, this is a good industry to consider. A good hotel in this area for a staycation or a scouting trip is the Sofitel Frankfurt Opera in the Opera Quarter and right in the center of the business district. The airport is also quite big, so any work in this field would be good to look into. Other infrastructure jobs are in demand as well. You will need to apply for a work permit, which should be sponsored by your company, or you can apply for self-employment. If you are an EU national, then no visa is necessary. The cooler weather, the fairly high wages, but high cost of living. We told you a little bit about Frankfurt, but would we live here? Let's talk about it. All right, so this is the part of our videos where we talk about our opinions, how we felt in the city, and then at the end, whether or not we could live there. I thought the city was a bit rough. It was nice kind of along the water on, I think on this opposite side of the train station was a, a little nicer. I liked the feel of the opposite side of the train station better than the side that had the train station. It still feels a little rough though, I think with the people and maybe the architecture gives it that appearance. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, well, as we explored and we got out from the train station, um, it's not the best representation of the city. Oh gosh, right around the train station is just right now not good. Like, just not good. <laughs> okay, so we've flown through several times. We've arrived at the airport, we've done that whole thing, but, but then during a longer stay, we arrived uh, through the train station and we decided instead of you know getting a taxi or Uber, let's just walk to the hotel, which the hotel was 20, 
ish minutes yeah, maybe not from, even. from yeah. the train station. So we exited the train station and had to arrive at the hotel. And boy, like the area that we had to walk through was rough. There's also another hotel that we stayed at because we wanted to be in different areas of the city so we could talk to you guys with a little more, uh, like a little more holistically. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the one, one of the areas that we stayed in was where the 25th hour hotel is. And I'll put a link in the description section below for you guys. Um, that area feels very seedy or sketchy. Yeah, the hotel is pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of um, trendy, I guess. Um, what would be the word? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's trendy. Eclectic. I think eclectic is the word that I would eclectic, go for. Eclectic is, I think, what the brand is really known for. It's okay. stylish, it's trendy, it's eclectic. But yeah. the location of it is just not nice. Like, I wouldn't feel comfortable walking by myself at night, and we were even there with a friend, so uh, a female as well, and the two of us were talking about, we wouldn't even, like, if it's later, we wouldn't want to walk by ourselves in this area. Now, the Sofitel that we stayed at, which is in the opera um, district, right by the beautiful opera uh, house, and then there's, like, a walking street, I felt way more comfortable there. And it's weird, as you leave the train station and you're walking, um, you walk through this area, and then it's almost like you get to this main road and just across this main road there's like a little park and you start seeing like the sky the the high rises the skyscrapers and the stock exchange and everything and you just it's a totally a totally different feel so I guess it depends on where in Frankfurt you are as to what experience you'll have yeah for sure and you highlighted something really good is that we were traveling with a friend of ours who does some solo traveling speaking with her and then also speaking with the people that live there speaking with the the people that work at the hotel the 25th hour hotel even they were like, mm, yeah, it is a little dodgy around here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are people who have to travel to the hotel for work, um, the workers. They're traveling there or commuting there, and they notice that it's, it's not quite right. Uh, so let's move away from the negative and, and talk a bit about the positive. The food scene there is fantastic. Oh, both, the pubs, yeah. Both international and and the the local German food, mm -hmm. like fantastic. We had some mm -hmm. awesome meals there, some pork knuckle, which I highly recommend you try if, if you're into pork, if, if you like that sort of thing, some pork, some kraut, some beer. Mm -hmm. And the mm. apple wine, so that was really nice. I really liked on the other side of the river, it gave a more like livable type um, feel, a bit smaller uh, feeling, and there were some really cute pubs there. And you could see it's not just touristy type things like people locals go to these um, so it was just good to get like a nice meal and apple wine was a lot of fun to try that was like a you must try you must have kind of thing and so that's definitely good everyone drinks it and when it's cold it's really nice that it's warmed yeah we've traveled there during the winter as well so um, we know that it's not that bad it's not too cold yeah I didn't think the right? weather was that bad yeah mm -hmm. No. It, it was a bit gray some days, but in terms of it being like super freezing, uh, we didn't experience that, so that was nice. I mean, obviously you want to go based on like not the micro, but the macro, like what does is, what is historic weather tell you, that type of thing. Because then if you're moving there, you're expecting this to, to happen on a seasonal basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, in general, I don't think that the winters are that bad. Let's get to the, 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 the final part of this, and, and that is, would you expat that? So this is the section where we talk about whether we could live in a certain city or country for a, a temporary, a short amount of time, short to medium amount of time. Would you expat Frankfurt? I would not expat Frankfurt. Um, there was something about it, the vibe that I didn't really like. There are parts that were cool, that were interesting, but not to live there. Um, yep, yeah, I wouldn't. Would you? I'm gonna to lean towards uh, answering it the same way you would. So I'm gonna say no. There are parts that I could live in for sure. Uh, on the other side of the river, like you said, that residential area. Um, if my job relocated me there, I would I would be okay. It wouldn't be I the wouldn't, end of the world. I, yeah. I would not I would not turn down a job offer. I would you know what I mean? Like yeah, just true. because it's Frankfurt, I would not do that. I would go. I would take the job. Um, I would probably still live on the other side of the river, mm -hmm. close to the bridge to get across to the, the business district, if, that, yeah, if, if, that if that's where work is. Um, yeah, I think the cost of living is, is fairly high. Mm -hmm. So if my wages aren't great, like if, if I'm just doing YouTube like this. Or uh, if you're a digital nomad. Digital nomad, yeah, I don't, I don't think it would be a great idea unless you're dealing with German companies and you wanna be close to those companies that you're dealing with because it is uh, a great area to be dealing with businesses in Germany because a lot of businesses operate out of the hub, yeah. Yeah, out of the city. 
So I'm gonna give it a pass. However, there are some cities in Germany that I do think that, that I could find myself expatting, if yeah, you will. I agree. Um, and there are some people that we've talked to that are expats in Germany. So if you wanna check that out, click on this playlist right here. We've created that just for you to check out more about Germany. So this is Josh. And Kaylee. And it's been Expats Everywhere Explorers. Now let's get moving. Bye. Bye.